Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get out your King James Bible. We're going to go do Jeremiah chapter 49, the continuation of the Jeremiah series. Trying to finish this up. And... Uh, Boy, I'm surprised. Father must really be uh, wanting to keep the channel online because, <laughs> honestly, I'm surprised the channel's still online. I really am. Oh, well, all glory to him. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 1. Concerning the Ammonites, thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doth their heart, I'm sorry, why then doth their king inherit Gad and his people dwell in his cities? Hmm. Looks to me like Gad is uh, moving in with the Ammonites. Verse 2. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabbah of the Ammonites, and it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughters shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel be heir with them that were his heirs, saith the Lord. Now, what does the Bible say about the Ammonites? Same thing about the Moabites. Deuteronomy 23.3 An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Well, Chaplain Bob, what it really means is that in the eleventh generation they can come in. Uh, well, what does Nehemiah 13, 1 say? Now, remember, Nehemiah, if memory serves me correctly, Nehemiah is the king who took over for Jerusalem when Babylon fell and Judah went back to Jerusalem. And if memory serves me correctly, Ezra was the priest. I could have that backwards, but... I think Nehemiah is the king and Ezra was the priest, the high priest. So let's read Nehemiah 13 and verse 1. On that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Forever. How long is forever? Yeah, exactly. So, obviously, they were tied in with the Canaanites. And sadly, they were of the good seed originally, but uh, they must have intermarried with the Canaanites. Boy, those Canaanite women must have been pretty good looking for all the guys to mess around with that stuff. Verse 3, Jeremiah 49, Howl, O Heshbon, for Ai is spoiled. Cry, ye daughters of Rabbah, gird you with sackcloth. Lament and run to and fro by the hedges, for their king shall go into captivity, and his prince and his pr prince and his priests and his princes together. Verse 4. Wherefore, glorious thou in the valleys, thy flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, that trusteth in her treasure, saying, Who shall come unto me? Behold, I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord God of hosts, from all those that be about me, and ye shall be driven out every man Right forth, and none shall gather up him that wandereth. 
Sounds like uh, everybody's going to be scattered into a different direction and there won't be getting together. And afterward, I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. Verse 7. Oh boy, here we go. Change of subject. Concerning Edom. Now, who is Edom? Well, you had Abraham, you had Isaac, and then you had Jacob. And Jacob had a brother named Esau. And Esau is Edom. And Edom is Idumea. So if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. A, B, C are all equal. I learned that in algebra, right? All right. Genesis 36, verse 1 and verse 8. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Now I have an entire study on Esau. Genesis 25, 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. You know, birthright was a, a gift of God and, God. and Esau hated his birthright. And he sold it for a bowl of beans. Doesn't sound too good. Listen to this. God doesn't like Esau. Well, Esau hates God and God's returning the favor, I guess you could say. But in Ezekiel 25, verse 14, And I will lay my vengeance upon Esau. Uh, I'm sorry. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Now, I don't know how true it is, but uh, Josephus, a Jewish historian who lived in the time, around the time of Christ, who was employed by a Roman, said that King Herod and his entire family were of Esau Edom. Now, if we can believe that, I can. I mean, let's face it. Uh, Herod's family did nothing good in the Bible. Absolutely nothing. Matter of fact, it was a Herod that uh, tried, tried to kill Jesus and killed all the, the babies in Bethlehem, what, from two years old and under? Oh, yeah. And he married a Hittite woman. Matter of fact, I think two of them. They must have been pretty hot looking. Uh, you know, a lot of guys think, uh, oh, having a couple of wives is really, what a fantasy, you know, but... Uh, let me tell you something. How would you like two women and, you know, one in your left ear and one in your right ear uh, complaining to you? Uh, that, that don't sound like no fantasy to me. That's what you call double trouble. No, thank you. I got enough problems. I had enough problems with just one. I don't need, yeah. Obadiah 118. And the house of Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Remember that. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. And the house of Esau, for stubble. And they shall kindle in them. Stubble is something you burn. 
and kindle is what you know when you're starting a fire and the house of esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and they're not shall listen to this and there shall not be any remaining of the house of esau for the lord hath spoken it does that sound like God loves everybody? No. And when you're talking about the house of Esau, you're talking about his descendants, his children. I mean, seriously, people. Seriously. How about Romans 9.13? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And of course, your black Hebrews will say, oh yeah, why do he be, he be Esau? God hate, God hate him. I mean, really? Really, dude? Who are the people that printed the Bibles and translated the Bibles into all languages in the world almost? And who built all the churches? Esau? Really? Yeah. They're nonsense. It, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, I know who built all the churches. All I got to do is go to Europe. And if, you're, if you go to Africa, well, you can call a mud hut a church if you want, but... Now, if you want to, you can read Genesis 28, where Esau married two Hittite women. And then he also took of a daughter of Ishmael. So there's a very, very good chance that the Arabs and Esau intermarried. I wonder if the Saudi royal family is involved here. I don't know. Here's a couple of good verses. Malachi 1. Every time you hear somebody say, oh, God loves everybody, have them read Malachi 1. Of course, they'll say, well, that's the Old Testament. And we're New Testament Christians. And, and then Jesus came and... You know, Jesus changed his mind, and now he loves everybody. Uh, I almost hate these people. You know, God, God tells us we're supposed to love these people. Malachi 1.3, And I hated Esau, and I laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. What is a man's heritage? His children. Hebrews 12, 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Why would they call Esau a fornicator? Because he married wives of the Hittites, which were absolutely positively forbidden as marriage partners. Forbidden. But Chaplain Bob, everybody, you know, it doesn't matter now. God wants, we're all children of faith. Well, you can believe that stuff if you want. You can believe that all the way until they cut your head off. And you can preach to them all you want. Well, there's people that will try to tell you that the Canaanites were... Uh, you know, oh, well, they were just spiritually bad people. But uh, once they have faith in Christ, oh, they can be saved. They can be saved. No problem. Well, if you believe that, then open the floodgates for immigration. Let everybody into the countries from wherever they are come in and preach the gospel to them. You know, we shouldn't have borders. We're all one in the world, right? God loves everybody. Now, let's face it. Let's go to Matthew 15 if you think everybody's the same. 
verse 1, Matthew 15, 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Now remember, the Pharisees were Jews. Not all Jews were Pharisees, but all Pharisees are Jews. So they were saying, verse 2, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with washing your hands before you eat. But I'm sure there was a little ritual. Oh, you got to start with the right hand. And then you got to go in this direction. And then you got to go to the left hand and go in that direction. And then you got to do this and that and the other and all these little ritual things. If you want to be holy before the Lord. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I'm guessing here. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Can you imagine cursing your parents? I mean, placing a curse on somebody is witchcraft. We're not just saying, oh, damn it, mom. I don't want to come home before midnight. Now, that's not what we're talking about here. You know, we're talking about somebody placing a curse on their parents or you know, telling your mom and dad to go to hell. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Everybody says, oh, that's pretty harsh. Well, uh, what, what was it, the Melendez brothers that murdered their parents because they wanted the inheritance? Yeah. You know, there's, there's uh, warning signs, people. There's warning signs. I knew a guy that lived in Palm Beach, Florida. You know, that little island where Donald Trump and all those people live? And he, he wanted his, his father to die. You know why? His father bought him an Isuzu sports car, and he didn't want an Isuzu. He wanted a Porsche. A Porsche. I actually heard him say that. Yeah, I hope my dad dies so I can get that money. Like, really, dude? Dad was a corporate raider. Uh, he would buy up a company, clean out the pension fund money, and then bankrupt the company. So all the people that had worked there for 20, 25, 30 years lost their pensions. But he got to live in Palm Beach. Oh, yeah in a multi-million dollar house. Uh, the nut doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. In other words, no matter what you say to your parents, or even if you place a curse on them, it's a gift. It's a gift. So in verse 6, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. See, this is the tradition of the elders. This is what the rabbis say. Oh, well, that's a gift. You know, you're cursing your parents. That's a gift from God. Well, their God or his, you know. So instead of carrying out the death sentence, like the Bible says, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain. What does vain mean? Worthless. 
but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. It's not that which goeth into the mouth that defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defile, defileth a man. Eating bread with unwashed hands doesn't defile you. But the words that come out of your mouth from your heart, that defiles the man. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Jesus, don't you know you're offending those Pharisees? This is what, you know, this is what they teach. You know, the commandments of men. You're offending them. Jesus, you're offensive. You know that? You're full of hate. That's the modern translation. All right, verse 13. Listen carefully. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, Every plant, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. But, 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 but God, God created everything. What's Jesus talking about here? Uh, there's plants that God the Father didn't plant here. There's weeds. Yeah. Read the parable of the wheat and the tares. There's weeds in God's garden. And they're not just spiritual weeds. Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. I got a playlist on Genesis 6, people, and the origin of the Canaanites. It's not just a spiritual thing. It is, I mean, it is spiritual, but it's a physical thing, too. They're, they're not of God's planting. That's why they can't hear God's word. Verse 14, Jesus says, let them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Genesis 28, verse 9. Uh, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the, uh, took unto the wives, which he had uh, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. So there you go. There's a joining of Ishmael and Esau there. So, and Ishmael was to live among the Arabs. Here you go. Genesis 36, verse 2. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and uh, Aholibamah, the daughter of Anon, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. Uh, okay, so he took a Hivite and a Hittite. And according to some archaeologists, the Hittites, uh, when they uncovered their temples, you know, for years they thought uh, the Hittites were uh, non-existent. Well, then they were excavating around there in the desert and they found a, the, a city of the Hittites and one of their temples. And guess what? The Hittites were depicted with extremely long, large noses. Huh? Maybe that's where uh, Pinocchio came from. I don't know. What do you say? What do you say? So, yeah. So he married a Hivite, a Hittite, which were Canaanites, and he married an Ishmaelite. So, all right, I think I've covered enough about Esau. 
Let's go to Jeremiah 49 and verse 7. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Timon? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee! Turn back! Dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan! For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. If grape gatherers, grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? You know, when you harvest a field, I mean, you're going to miss, you're going to miss some fruit. If thieves by night, will they destroy till they have enough? You know, I mean, you know, if thieves come, they can only carry so much, right? Verse 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled. And no, we're not talking about his garden. We're talking about his children. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive, and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And thou art he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Uh, drinking of the cup. <laughs> Boy, you can make a whole Bible study of that. Remember when Jesus was in the garden and he asked the Lord, he asked God the Father, if it, you know, if it be, let this cup pass from me that I might not drink it. You know, I'm kind of paraphrasing there, but, uh, you know, and then you have the woman of Babylon drinking the cup of the wrath of God, of his indignation. Now remember, Christ was uh, drinking of the cup of our sins. He was taking upon himself all our punishment. Wow. Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Verse 13. For I have sworn by myself. Yeah, you know, you go to court and you, you swear to God. Well, God swears by himself. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual wastes. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together and come against her, and rise up to the battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised among men. Is there a group of people that are very small in numbers? And despised among people, among men? Huh. Let me think about that. Is there a, a small group of people that are hated everywhere? Hmm. Esau, Edom. Verse 16. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart. O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Uh, I believe this is talking about Petra. You know, everybody's always saying, oh yeah, Petra, Petra, and the Lord's going to take the Jews and bring them to Petra and save them there. Uh, if I remember correctly, Petra was part of Edom. Verse 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation, 
Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss, hiss, at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in there. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong, but I will suddenly make him run away from her. For who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me, and who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord, that he hath taken against Edom. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. Now, who's, who's going to come up and fly as the eagle? The Lord. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Yeah, the mighty men are going to be like a woman giving birth. Verse 23. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded, and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed feeble, and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. There's that woman giving birth again. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadab. If memory serves me correctly, this is the some of the people that took northern Israel into captivity. I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's, you know. But we're talking about Judah here not northern Israel. Verse 28. Concerning Kedar and concerning the kingdom of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall smite, thus saith the Lord, Arise ye, go up to Kedar, and spoil the men of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall they take away. They shall take to themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their camels, and they shall cry unto them, Fear is on every side. You know, when the Lord brings judgment upon the wicked, fear is on every side. Flee, get you far off, dwell deep, O ye inhabitants of Hazor, saith the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath taken counsel against you and hath conceived a purpose against you. Arise, Get you up unto the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, which have neither gates nor bars, which dwell alone. And their camels shall be a booty. Now, a modern slang, uh, when you're talking about booty, uh, well, when guys of the lower base persuasion talk about wo booty, they're talking about a woman's uh, bottom. But for those that, you know, like the pirates, booty was what you could loot. 
gold, silver, jewels, whatever. Uh, food. So, I don't know when booty became a woman's rear. I, I don't know. Verse 32, And their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their cattle a spoil. And I will gather into all winds them that are in the utmost corners, and I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof, saith the Lord. And Hazor shall be a dwelling for dragons. Dragons! I remember in Revelation 12, um, dragons are, you know, it says that old serpent uh, called the devil and Satan, that, you know, the dragon, serpent, dragons, devil and Satan. Yeah. So are dragons uh, tied in with the devils? Obviously. I mean, look at China. Year of the dragon. Don't they have dragon festivals where they dress up and have parades with dragons? Oh, yeah. Are they telling you who they serve? And Hazor shall be a dwelling for dragons and a desolation forever. And there shall no man abide there, nor any son of man dwell in it. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, Elam, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might, and upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them toward all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. Doesn't sound like the Lord likes Elam, does it? And I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days, the latter days, the last days, right? That I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. Um, I looked up Elam and Genesis 10, 22, it says the children of Shem. Now remember, Shem is the chosen seed line in the Bible from, from Noah says, the children of the Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram. Huh. So, uh, and then in, uh, let's see, you got Genesis 14.1. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Eli Asar, Chedor Leomer, king of Elam, king of Elam, and title, king of nations. So evidently, Elam is a person and a city, was a person. So, you know, that's not an uncommon thing. The children of Dan uh, conquered a city and then named it, renamed it Dan. That happened in the Bible, too. So evidently, Elam is uh, of the chosen seed, and I guess they made the Lord angry, but the Lord will have a remnant. In Isaiah 11 and 11, Isaiah 11, 11, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant, the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. What islands are in the sea? Well, you know, Greece, 
and Cyprus and uh, the United Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. So God always has his remnant. Listen to this about Elam in uh, Ezekiel 32 and verse 24. This is Elam and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which cause their terror in the land of the living. Yet they have borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. Doesn't sound like... Uh, doesn't sound like the Lord is very happy with them, does it? No. However, in Acts chapter 2, we read, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You didn't know they had Hondas back then, did you? They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, these tongues were languages. They were able to speak to the people in languages that they understood, not gibberish. And they, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You know, fishermen from Galilee were not exactly considered uh, the scholars of the day, okay? They wouldn't know different languages, okay? I mean, they might know Greek, which was the common language of the day. They might know some Latin because they had to deal with the... Um, the Romans, and they probably knew some Aramaic Hebrew. I don't know. But they were not known to being, you know, fishermen are not known to being scholars. You know, you go to uh, University of California, Berkeley, or uh, University of New York, uh, you know, you don't have fishermen there teaching as a PhD. Just doesn't seem to happen. And how hear we every man in his own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians. You know what, people? Take a look at the Parthian Empire. Totally deleted from history. I only learned about this a while ago, maybe a year or so or two. Parthians and Medes and Elamites. Ah, Elamites. There's those Elamites. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, uh, Pergia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongue and our tongues, the wonderful works of God. Oh, yeah. The wonderful works of God. Of God. God has his remnant. Absolutely, positively, always has his remnant. May we be worthy and honored and full grace to be part of that remnant. All right, well, this is the end of Jeremiah chapter 49. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.